हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजीटी कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्टरेट आर के पुरम लेट मी वेलकम यू टू आर अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास 12 स्टूडेंट्स इन आवर प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द मीनिंग द डेफिनेशन एंड द प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड टिल नाउ यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द कांसेप्ट्स बेस्ड ऑन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इन आवर प्रेजेंट एपिसोड we shall discuss about the importance of organizing how important organizing is for the business so let we begin with our first importance of organizing that is benefit of specialization in organizing process we have discussed that all the activities are identified and put into a particular group which is known as job and each job is given to a particular person who is best in doing that job it helps the employee to work again and again the same thing and he will get specialization in doing that particular work students now let me understand this first point benefit of specialization with the help of an example in ncert there is one department that is ciet central institute of educational technology this department is given the responsibility of producing video lectures on different topics which will be useful for the students and in studio each and every person is given a specific task like the camera work is given to a particular person the lights this responsibility is given to another person and there are other engineers who are allotted different works and since they are doing this work again and again every day so they will get specialized in doing that job and once they are getting specialization in doing that job that automatically brings the efficiency and effectiveness in the task of all these persons and which brings the perfection into their work so that is the first importance of organizing that is the benefit of specialization now the second importance of organizing is role clarity each person is assigned a particular task he is not supposed to perform any other task as a result it is clear in the mind of a person who is working on a particular post that what type of work he has to do what is expected from him and he will be executing that task only there is no confusion in his mind what type of work he has to do he has to get the orders from the superior and he has to just execute the same and he is accountable to the superior only about the completion of the job so the role clarity is made possible in organizing which clears all the doubts and brings efficiency and effectiveness to the operations of the business organization the third importance of organizing is optimum utilization of resources organizing ensure that every person is executing his task to the perfection which brings efficiency to the operations which minimizes the cost and helps in maximizing the returns for the business organization and in this way the optimum utilization of resources are made possible since there is no overlapping of work possible in the organization next point of importance of organizing is adoption to change we know the environment is ever changing in business environment we have done the macro factors we are changing the environment every day but it is very very easy in organizing to adopt those changes and implement those changes in a particular department all the departmental activities are separated so if the change is taking place in a particular department so the organization has to make change in that department only and later on other departments will be circulated with the help of a paper on which it will be written these are the changes taking place and now our organization has already incorporated all these changes so that makes possible in organizing now next importance of organizing is expansion and growth organizing ensures that every task in the organization should be done to the perfection efficiency should be brought to the organization which brings effectiveness automatically it helps the organization in easy expansion and growth you may be thinking how when every work is done to the perfection it will bring efficiency into the operations of the business which will minimize the cost and if the cost is minimized the profits are automatically maximized and when the profits are maximized a part of the profit can be utilized by the business organization by redeploying back the reserves and the profits into the business and in this way the expansion of the business is made possible in an organization 
So it is only organizing which is ensuring the expansion and growth of the business organization. Now students, the last importance of organizing is development of personnel. In an organization, every worker is given an opportunity to do some task of his superior, which is known as delegation of authority. The delegation of authority helps the superior in removing his workload. In the meantime, it gives an opportunity to other workers working under him to learn the task of a superior job. So in future, when they will be getting the promotion, so they will be able to execute the task of superior very, very easily because they are perfect in doing that task. They got an opportunity when they were working at a lower level, but now they are coming up to one level up and they know how to do the work of that level. So organizing helps the individuals to understand the requirements of the top level of management. Here we are talking about the post in which he is going to be promoted and in this way the overall development of the personnel will take place. Now students, we have come to an end of importance of organizing. But now we are coming to the most important part of organizing that is organizational structure. The question arises, what is organizational structure? An organizational structure is a network of job positions in which authority and responsibilities are established at all the three levels of management. These are the top level of management, middle level of management and the lower level of management. It can be understood in another way that a framework within which the organization has to work to meet all its organizational requirements and which helps in the achievement of organizational goals. The organizational structure can be divided into two parts. The first is functional organizational structure and second is divisional organizational structure. Now the question arises, what is the meaning of functional structure? Functional structure is divided on the basis of functions to be performed in an organization. It is comprising of the production department, finance department, marketing department, personal department, research and development department, and once the size of the business organization is increasing, more departments will be attached to the organization. So here in functional organizational structure, it is typically all the activities are grouped and divided on the basis of functions performed by the organization. Now, what are the advantages attached to the functional structure? The very first advantage which is available in functional organizational structure is functional specialization. Every person is allotted with a specific task and in order to complete that task, he is having the educational and the professional qualification. The requisite experience is also with him, which will help him in completing the task to the perfection. So it brings specialization to the works of the organization. The second importance of the functional structure is efficiency. Once every person is assigned with a job, he will be doing that job and by doing it again and again, the person will be wasting the resources to the minimum level which brings the efficiency into the operations of that particular person. And when all the persons are working efficiently, it will automatically bring efficiency in the operations of entire organization. And once the efficiency is brought into the operations of the organization, then it will help the organization in the achievement of its specific goals. The next advantage of functional structure is minimizes cost. In functional structure, it is very much clear in the minds of each and every person the type of raw material the person is going to use. It helps in using the organizational resources to the minimized cost which will help the organization in bringing down overall cost of the organization which will ultimately help in the increasing of the profits of the business organization. The next advantage of functional structure is better control and coordination. As so many departments are operating within the organization. So it is very, very easy to coordinate the activities of one department with another department. Let me take an example to clear that. The production department has decided to increase the production level from 50 lakh units to 1 crore units. In order to manufacture 50 lakh more units, the production department more raw material 
in order to buy the raw material the organizational productional head will be asking the finance manager about that particular requirement of the money and once the information is circulated to the finance department the finance manager will look for managing the money he has to find out the various sources which are available to him he has to go for the issue of shares debentures taking bank loan taking loans from subsidiaries or taking public deposits or going for the fixed deposits so the organizational head that is the finance manager will decide what type of source of finance the organization is going to have and it helps in organizing the activities in a better way because the finance department after managing the money will buy the raw material and will give it to the production department production department will be producing the goods and then they have to mention it to the head of the marketing department that they have to go for aggressive advertisement which will help the organization in selling more and more goods in the market so because of in this year we are finding there is a demand of the product in the market and every person is giving their best in increasing the production level of the organization it ultimately helps in bringing all the activities together and it helps in the reorganization of all the departments of the business organization so here we have to understand that functional structure helps in bringing coordination and ultimately effective control to all the operations of the departments working in a single organization now next advantage of functional structure is the proper attention to all departments in functional organizational structure it is already decided that we have to divide it on the basis of functions to be performed in the organization so proper attention is given to each and every department what are the requirements of a particular department the management has to ensure that and after that due attention is given to that particular requirement all efforts will be made that there should not be any conflict arising in any of the departments our next advantage of functional structure is effective training of employees why we are using the word here effective training the reason behind this in functional organizational structure each person is going to perform a particular task so his skills requirement of training are limited so whenever he is going for the training for his task it will help him in getting it to the perfection he will get the deeper knowledge of his task and in this way each and every person working in the organization will be getting the training of doing the task by understanding it to the deepest level and it helps in bringing again the efficiency which helps the organization in the attainment of its organizational objectives students till now we have understood the advantages of functional structure now let we have some drawbacks of functional structure the very first drawback of functional structure is functional empires in functional organizational structure each department is headed by a person known as the departmental manager the departmental manager is taking care of all the activities of his department only he is thinking about his department only all the times and may ignore the organizational interest so because he is ignoring organizational interest it may harm the reputation of the business and business may not be able to achieve its targets so that is the disadvantage which are available in functional organizational structure the second point of disadvantage is problems in coordination sometimes it has been observed that there is a lack of coordination among the different departments working in the business organization for example the marketing department may tell the production department that consumers are needing this particular quality in the product of our company so the product should be modified according to their choice it may cause problem for the production department in this way there may be coordination problem exist between these two departments so that is another demerit of functional organization structure the third demerit is interdepartmental conflicts the different departments are working in the organization sometimes the interest of one department say the allocation of resources the allocation of money it may hamper the overall coordination which is to be established in the organization the next disadvantage is inflexibility inflexibility in the sense each departmental manager is having information and awareness about his department only and he may not give due response and respect to the opinion of other departmental managers it brings inflexibility in the organization 
because the suggestion of one departmental manager is not accepted by another departmental manager by thinking that I know better of my department and how other person is giving that particular suggestion to me. So now we have come to an end of the disadvantages of functional organizational structure. In our next episode, students, we shall study about the divisional organizational structure. By the time, stay in tune. Thank you.